Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I've got a little bit of news when it comes to No Man's Sky and Light No Fire. So shall we jump on over to what I've got for you guys inside of the Viewerverse? So here we are over on the Twitter space. Now we will be revisiting Twitter fairly soon and taking a look at what Sean of the Murrays has put out there about Light No Fire, or at least it alludes to Light No Fire. We'll get to that in a moment, but now for No Man's Sky type news. So the Steam database internal has just updated. Now Professor Sinlickle has made an observation. The version is significantly higher than current release. Major update inbound. I don't really know what he means by that. I mean, yes, you can see the internal branch here. 14508465. Is he going by this number here? Because if he is, yes, that is, a, that is quite a significant leap, to be fair. Maybe it's a 0.5 update, or maybe it is going to be a marked full versional update. We can only but wait and see. I think that's kind of clutching at straws. I don't want to raise people's expectations too high, especially since I've done a poll over on my community tab to ask people how excited they are for an update for No Man's Sky. So I put here, how excited for you for the next No Man's Sky update or expedition? Me, enjoying finding new ways to play No Man's Sky right now, making my own fun, but always excited to see what Hello Games has to deliver hopes and expectations are in check think it would be an expedition some quality of life things i kind of feel if they are to put out some kind of update it might be tied into perhaps the wonders catalog now anyway i've got another poll on that a little bit further up okay so some people 18 percent of people inside of this poll and there was 296 votes said so so i think it would just be an expedition but I like them, I guess. Man, playing other things for now, but I'll jump back in. That's 30% of the actual player base for No Man's Sky that watches my channel, which is predominantly No Man's Sky. 30% of that person's is quite a hefty figure, considering we've got roughly 300 people there. That's like, what, 10% of the people that have hit up to say that they're playing something other than No Man's Sky right now? Yes, Hello Games need to really pull it out of the bag to bring their player base back to No Man's Sky. Very, my number one game. I need more to do. 15% of people hit that up. Heck yes, even if it is small. Always love what Hello Games does. 26%, that's nearly as close though. That's nearly another swathe of the population that have said 26%. And then 11% said, just want to see the poll results, same as you. Now, there are 17 comments inside of here as well, people, that we could go through and I could sort of comment on. But it's mainly people sounding off with their ideas and hopes for the next update. Now, I'm scrolling quite slowly on this. If you do want to read these, you can sort of pause this and take this in. But thank you, everybody that has left comments on here. Sadly, I've got quite a lot to delve into inside of this update rather than um oh dear there's my alarm i should be live right now people boom there we go yes yeah, so it is a bank holiday monday i'm making a video and i'm going to be putting it out it might go out tonight but there might not be any content for monday being that it's a bank holiday here in the uk i guess okay people now here is my other poll where i was saying I think the next update or expedition will be more wonders aligned in No Man's Sky. Reason being is the wonders catalogue has a missing item on page one. Yeah, you just can't get it for the life of you. And the total tally doesn't match what we can find. If it is, here are some of the guesses at a name for it. What one do you like the most or leave a comment with your own? So I've gone for a couple of here. Astro Flux. Yeah, these are all weird, real words. 11% <laughs> of people. Stellarian, I quite like that, you know, interstellar and all that sort of stuff. Stellarian, I quite like that one, 19%. Nebulon, 22%, I guess. Galaxium, that's pretty darn snazzy, isn't it? 30%. And Cosmoglyph, 
Yeah, that's that's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? Hard to say, but 19 people hit that one up. Not as many votes partaked in this one, to be fair. I mean, it's just trying to guess at a name for it. Going by the last one was Orbital. Hello Games seems to pick out, you know, just one-worded type things for each of their different updates. So I'm hoping maybe one of those might be on the money. We're running out of freaking words that are almost spacey-like. But then again, we have had things in the past like Fractal, which hasn't got much to do with space it's more to do with how things are formed so you know and also cartographers again had the stuff to do with maps didn't it so who knows it could be freaking every anything really i mean we've had the abyss as well which is to do with the depth of oceans and things so who knows could be anything it's just a bit of fun and then there's a few comments on this one as well people just to sound off yeah i guess cool you anyways what else have we got oh yes I have mentioned Sean of the Murrays back over and over on the Twitter space. Let me go hit that up. Okay, so we're on Sean Murray's profile over on the old Twitter space. And we've got, still got the Light No Fire trailer that's actually pinned right there, people. Cool, yeah? But then look at this. Sean Murray has just put just as well on the Jeff Keighley post. And Jeff Keighley said, I love watching new video game trailers. Okay, and there's Summerfest just around the corner, isn't there? Yeah, now this got people fairly excited over on the old Twitter space, especially on Sean Murray's sort of retweeting and comment on that one. You can see here all the usual people inside the No Man's Sky community going slightly crazy for it. Heck yes, light no fire. We're hoping that this might mean something. We're hoping this might mean we might get to see a little bit on Light No Fire. Now, I even put my own sort of um, post out on this. Let's just jump on over to here. This is my profile page. If you're not following me on Twitter, please do, people. So here we go. And I put, I hope this means we get more footage of Light No Fire. Platforms for release get listed. Pre-order bundles announced. Game objective and goal. And get to see some more of the combat and, combat and magic, etc. Because we didn't get to see enough of that, in my opinion, in the first sort of round of trailer. And we don't really even know what our purpose is inside of Light No Fire. So I would like to see that realised into actuality. Or just to get more information on it. Anyways, I was busy over on my community tab. I do a lot on my community tab, people. If you're not looking at my community tab quite often, you might want to check it out because I did go and have a look at Summerfest. I didn't realize it starts in 11 days, nine hours. Yeah, it's June 7th, people, if you're not in the know. I wasn't in the know until I went and looked. So it does make sense. I mean, Jeff Keighley usually hosts the Summer Fest, the Summer Games Fest. Let's keep our fingers crossed that we get to see some more Light No Fire in June. Now, there's a few other games here that I've mentioned. Eternal Strand, Towers of Escaba, Blue Protocol, Under a Rock, and Little Devil Inside. Now, I was thinking maybe of playing video footage of each of these games inside of this video. I'm still undecided whether I'm going to do that or not, people. But some of these, you're probably like, I've never heard of that one. Not heard of that one. Yeah, a lot of these are indie titles, and a lot of them have got procedural generated elements, or a lot of them have got online play where you can make your own character and then be yourself inside of a, a, a reimagined world. So a lot of these are very, very interesting titles. Um, and Little Devil Inside has come onto the radar, fell off the radar, disappeared, then come back again and re-emerged and reimagined. That one's an interesting title. But yeah, maybe I should play some of the actual video footage for each of these. But yeah, then I put this here. Here we go. Sean Murray just replied to Jeff Keighley about the Games Awards. Now this could just be a nod to last year. Or it could be a nod to something new this year. Let's go for the latter, as it's far more fun. What do you hope to see from Hello of the Games? Another trailer that shows more of the game. 43% hit that up. Release platforms, rough window, uh, rough release window, pre-order bundles. 6% of people heard that one up. Game objective, goal, what do we do as players? Law and story, 12% of people. Okay, more on combat, biomes, magic, and the enemies and concept art. 4% of people hear that one up. 
All of the above. So excited. 34%. Thank you. Yes, yes, I definitely want to see all of the above, uh, I have to say. Yeah, there's a few comments on there. I mean, I only just put this live like six hours ago, so it hasn't really had time to sort of fester and gather any momentum. Thank you those that did pick it up, and thank you for all of those that have put comments on. Very much appreciated. And you know what? I think I might play um, each of those trailers for you and tell you why I'm excited for each of these games. I mean, obviously, I'm going to have to talk over them anyway because a lot of them have got, like, copyrighted music and stuff, haven't they? So, yeah, let, let's get back to my list of games and um, I'll go through each of them. Oh, actually, before we move away from anything that's No Man's Sky related or Light No Fire related... I just pointed out on my actual uh, community tab that on the 12th of June, the decals in the Quicksilver store should all be unlocked. According to the game files, that's when the counter counts down and comes to an end. Now, normally, Hello Games would like to put out an update around that date with at least new Quicksilver items in there. And you usually see new Quicksilver items come into the game alongside perhaps an expedition or update. So, I have put out a poll to see when people think it's most likely that we might see an update. So just after the 12th, on the 16th of June, because it plays into the 16, 16, 16, 32 percent of people like that idea or because the last expedition was expedition 12 and the next one is going to be expedition 13 perhaps it might release on the 13th of june a day after the decals expire 11 percent of people hit that one up but with the actual summer games fest starting on the 6th of june there's nothing to say that hello games might not announce at the Summer Games Fest, alongside maybe something with Light No Fire, maybe they might go and announce something larger happening with No Man's Sky. I mean, surely the Murrays did tell, you know, Jeff Keighley that this year would be a big year for No Man's Sky. Let's just remind ourselves of what Sean said. Well, to start with, uh, next year is going to be a really big year for No Man's Sky. Like you said, I've been working on it for 10 years now, and I still really love it, still really enjoy it. So I honestly do think that something could be on the cards around the 12th of June. You know, that's when the decals end, but there has been a good two week gap between the last of the actual Quicksilver items to the replenishment of new Quicksilver items. So I'm kind of leaving quite a massive swathe of window here for something to happen. I know it could be seen as a bit of a cop out, but I honestly do think that we're going to start seeing things happen with the depots, which we've already seen the internal branch have a little tickle. But I'm thinking that we might see something happen, maybe even to the experimental. I'm hoping that in between now and the 16th of June, we at least get the emoji drop and we might see some sales start to happen around, say, the 12th of June. That's my thoughts and feelings, people. Let us know what you think. I mean, you already have inside of this poll. 97 of you took part. And again, there's also comments on this one. So thank you, everybody that took part in that. Now back on up to the games inside of Summer Game Fest that I would like to see. Let's hit up each of these, shall we, people? Okay, so the first one is in-engine alpha footage, and it's Eternal Strands. And this should be coming to all platforms, I believe. Let's just hit play on this, and let's take a little look-see. Now, what sort of got me with this, first of all, is the art style. It looks very much like Fenrix Rises, the UBI soft title. But something that I really liked about this was the giant sort of antagonist, the enemies you've got to go up against. And there's, like, what eight of them or so around the world like giant world bosses and you can scale these guys just like say like shadow of the colossus one of my favorite games of all time a little bit like monster hunter as well and dragon's dogma again titles that i know and love the fact that you can use magics inside of this and use elemental magics against these giants as well and it kind of plays into and you know remember mega man so Mega Man, when you took out the bosses, you got one of their powers. Well, just like in this game, as you take out these giant well bosses, you also learn their skills to use against another boss. So there is some tactics in the order that you go and choose to take these out. And it does feel like Mega Man meets Shadow of the Colossus meets Fenric Rises. And this one has really captured my interest. So that's Eternal Strands. Let us know what you think of that in the comments, people. Is that something you'd like to see on my channel? So this next one is by Dreamlit Studios, and it's Towers of Ascaba. 
if I'm pronouncing that right or wrongly, I don't know. But this one's got sort of Zelda-esque vibes, or at least it has to me. Or the old game called Dark Cloud, which perhaps some of you may remember and some of you have got fond memories of. I know I have. But again, this one has got large antagonists, large monsters that you can climb all over and kick the butts on. But this world has sort of gone all sort of like a swamp, a marsh-like, and had its life stripped from it. And you're right, the idea is that you've got to go back there and garden it back to life. And you can put down buildings, and it looks like there's some of the creatures that you interact with there, like that giant turtle that reminds me of Never Ending Story and the giant turtle Myrtle, or whatever it was. It just looks beautiful. This game looks fantastic, and I like the idea, I like the goal of this, that you've got to try and bring life back to your planet. And this just looks like it's got beauty throughout, under the oceans and on land, and it's got dangers. The actual combat looks great, the way you traverse the world looks fantastic. This looks a little bit like Light No Fire in a roundabout way. I mean, I don't know how big the world is. But this looks freaking beautiful and it also looks like it's got a multiplayer aspect because there's scenes inside of this where you see other people also planting and bringing this world back to life. I think this one looks very good. I want to know more. I've joined the Discord but I'm not seeing much of new so I'm hoping to see that in Summer Game Fest. Okay, so this next one is Blue Protocol, and it's got sort of like uh, tie-ins with Amazon and Namco Bandai, and it's it's like an open-world RPG online, massive upon. The only thing is, is some people feel that this is going to be riddled with microtransactions, and there has been people on playtests that said, yes, that kind of is the case. I mean, it's going to be free to play. It's not going to be pay to win, but it's definitely going to be pay to make your character look as awesome as you want them to look. Which does sort of detract from things a little, but you know, they have to make their money somehow. As long as the game actually plays well, and the people that have played it have said, that is the case, it does play well. The hitboxes are good, the combat is good, you can make your own character in such a beautiful world. But they say that it's a bit of a grind. It almost feels like you're pummeling the same creatures over and over again for the sake of getting an extra sword or something like that. Which, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I don't think I'm up for a repetitive grindy play, but I'm definitely up for giving this a shot, especially since it's going to be free to play. I'm going to pick it up and see what I think. It was supposed to happen in the first quarter of 2024 for European release and world release. That hasn't happened. It's been delayed. It's been pushed back. It might not come out until the final quarter. I'm still been keeping my fingers crossed for the summer, but that's not looking overly hopeful at the moment, people. But what is looking hopeful is the art style, the graphics, and the actual combat it looks like it could carry this game even if it has got some micro transaction shenanigans going in there it's still something that i could pick up and play and do like a, a first impressions a review is it worth a play type thing considering it's free so that's going to come to my channel once it comes out over on the shores in the uk now this game was only earmarked i believe for the PC. It's called Under a Rock, but it looks like it's now been given the official Xbox release, which is pretty darn lovely. I haven't seen this trailer as yet, people, so hopefully I might see a bit more footage here. But anyway, this is like Jules Verne and travel to the center of the earth. You kind of go on this sort of expedition that goes wrong. You end up in this weird place that you've never seen before. You know it's not charted. And the idea is that it's procedurally generated and every single playthrough would be different. And you basically have to catalog this forgotten world and make entries in the sort of creatures and fauna and flora that you come across and then when you do manage to get to the out world or back to earth or back to good old blighty you can show everything that you've catalogued and it scores you on how well you've done in finding and cataloging the things inside of this strange fabled world and some of the creatures here look fantastic the art style looks great it's also got base building and basic survival elements every single cave is also pretty procedurally generated as well and the loots that you find and the treasures and the things that aid you on your quests and the landscape here just looks freaking sublime and the fact that it is procedurally generated each time makes you kind of feel like it's worth diving back in time and time again again you've got hang gliders for traversal and things like that which seems to be the norm in a lot of these open worldy games right now but you know what 
all the enemies in this look fantastic. I've seen a giant crab creature in previous trailers. I haven't seen those giant Diplo type things before. That's got Hello Gamesy type vibes all over it and No Man's Sky, hasn't it? But I really like the look of this. Also, you don't have to play as the female that you see in here. You do actually get a character creator and it is fairly basic, but you can create a male character if, if that's a thing. Yeah, anyway, anyway, Under a Rock is definitely on my watch list, people. Heck yes, it is. Yeah, it's got my peepers open for that one okay now this final one is little devil inside now this is a six minute trailer so i might not hit up all of it there are shorter trailers but this is the latest one now little devil inside has disappeared from the radar gone off development for various reasons and then came back in again and then been picked back up again this this title really does sort of have a certain something to it it's hard to put my finger on exactly what that is I think it's because it's got this English charm to it with these pubs and stuff like that and sort of things that I would say are Englishy type tropes. But then there's lots of other elements to this where you see them battling giant monsters and he's got a little sword. There's elements that almost look like it's straight out of Zelda or something. I love this world view as well. I mean, that looks just like something out of Little England, doesn't it? That does. It looks freaking beautiful. That's the world map. That's how you sort of traverse this world. And there's some really odd scenes in this where he's sitting on a toilet and then all of a sudden he's falling down it and all sorts of other stuff. I mean, I, look at that for a world map. That is just freaking beautiful. That's a work of art, isn't it? But anyway, let's just skip it on a bit and see if we can show you some of the action scenes because inside of this trailer there is quite a lot of gameplay as well. I mean, that's just some more of the map there. A little bit more of the map. But yeah, this is down at one of the buildings and things like that. You've got like a little missions board there as well. The other trailers have probably got a little bit more action in there, I might say. But look, there's all different biomes in here too. I mean, there's a monster there. We're going across a desert as well, some sort of deserty map. But yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here's, here's a bit of a, a monster scene. There you go. It's like a giant cockatrice from freaking Dragon's Dogma. And there you go. There's his little blade. You see what I mean by it looks a little bit Zelda-esque as well. And the world itself looks quite beautiful. I mean, it is quite dark. It's got a gothic sort of undertone and vibe. But then it's got elements that look quite bright and intriguing. And I'm loving this mix of technology. I'm liking the fact that it looks like a splurge of different countries that I know and love. There's bits in this that almost look like you could be in the Sahara Desert one moment or even in Japan. And then others where you're in what looks like Europe or even England, you know. So... This one has got me very intrigued. But like I say, this has come out as pre-order and pre-release type stuff on the actual store, the PSN store, and then vanished and then come back again and then vanished and then come back again. So who knows? But I'm hoping we get a proper fixed release date for this one during Summerfest. And I hope we get to learn a little bit more of it because it does look very whimsical, enchant enchanting and alluring. This one I'm interested in, but it does look like a solo sort of playthrough. I don't know whether it's right for my channel. I need some feedback for you guys inside the viewerverse. If I was to bring this to my channel, is it something you would watch? So anyway, yeah, that one was Little Devil Inside. And uh, it does look quite good. It looks quite cool. Now, I was hoping that the actual game title would come up on the screen. It's just... No. No. We're not getting anything there, are we, really? Yeah. Uh, I'll cut that bit out, I guess. Okay, jump. So that's a bevy of games that I'm interested in. Behind me right now is Ark Raiders, another title that I was interested in. The only thing is, this one, again, has been delayed time and time again. And um, every time we see a different rendition, and it kind of changes direction... And I really don't know what to expect from Art Raiders. I was extremely excited for it, yet I have seen some leaked footage on Twitter just the other week that made me think, oh, that looked terrible. So who knows? But I'm still eager to see more on Art Raiders. I like this original trailer. This original trailer was pretty fantastical, and I hope we get to see more of Ark Raiders. There was also another game called Concord. Let me see if I can get that in the background for you. So this game is actually coming from PlayStation Studio, so it might not actually drop until we get some sort of state of play. I don't know whether we're going to see it in Summerfest. But this one has all the same sort of notes and vibes that Starfield had. 
You know, it looks like you're a, a pilot of a spaceship and you've got a gun there. This just looks like a Starfield freaking trailer, doesn't it? Even like the cabinets and the retro sort of vibes and the unusual language and the idea that there might be some sort of wizardry going on inside of this spaceship because there was a burnt human-like handprint there. But I do like the visual effects. It looks very retro-esque. I want to learn more. I want to know what Concord is. So anyway, people, did I miss anything? Is there something that I should have on my radar and I don't? Have I missed something that you've got your eye peepers on? Let us know in the comments, people. But I am looking forward now to the Summer Game Fest. And it's not far away. The Summer Game Fest is going to happen before the decals run out inside of the No Man's Sky store. So at least the first two weeks of June, I'm hoping is going to be a very exciting two first weeks. Hey, yes, I'm hoping we get to learn more about all of those titles that I just mentioned. But most of all, I want to learn more about Light No Fire. Light No Fire, if you didn't see it at the Game Awards, I've got a trailer of that. I put it on screen now for you people. Oh, actually, I'll just put it there. I'll have it play in there while I've been talking all this time. It'd be a little bit smaller, but, you know, if you want to see it in full, I've put a link in the video description or something, or maybe even a card up there of one of my videos of Light No Fire. Go hit that one up. Stay with Captain Steve that little bit longer. There you go. That worked out all right, didn't it? Anyway, people, until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.